Now, you know what? Somebody told me that we were going to have folks in here today that are interested in development in Detroit, that are looking for employment, that are interested in some of the projects that are going on and opportunities that are going on. I think I'm in the wrong room. I'm going to try that again. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Now, there we go. I'd like to formally welcome everyone to the City of Detroit Skilled Trades Task Force. My name is Stephen Grady, and I'm Chief of Staff for your Detroit City Council President, Brenda Jones. Brenda Jones is en route. We had a very tough day today at the council table, uh, and she is actually kind of just shaking that off for a minute so that we can go into this next meeting. But she asked me to come over and kick the meeting off because we always start on time and we end on time with your cooperation, okay? Now, this meeting, the Skill Trace Task Force, was created to be able to bring together very important groups as it relates to development projects that are going on in the city. So we have some developers in the house here tonight. We also have some contractors in the house tonight. And as you can see, we have very many of our trade unions who are represented by these fine gentlemen and lady on both of my sides. Now, I'll tell you why this is so important. This is probably one of the only opportunities that all of these entities have a chance to be in the same room to talk about the future of this city and what's going on. Now, for those of you who are not a developer or a contractor or a trade unionist, you're probably someone here that's looking at the opportunities and says, hey, there's a group photo here. I'm looking for my picture. You know how when you take a picture and you know you were in the picture, who's the first person you look for? You look for yourself. That's right. So what we're going to try to do today, as we're talking about the projects that are going on, contracting needs, and opportunities in our trade unions, such as apprenticeships and things of that nature, we're going to ask for you, as you're listening, find yourself. For those who are looking for an apprenticeship, find yourself. For those who are looking for an employment opportunity on one of these projects, find yourself. For those who may be interested in becoming a contractor, find yourself because we have all of those folks available here today and for the next two hours, we're gonna go through some very important projects that are going on in the city and you're gonna have an opportunity to not only get firsthand information about what's going on, but if you see that microphone in the middle aisle there, you're going to be able to go up to the microphone and ask whatever question you have on your mind to our panel. Now, that's a great opportunity. That's a one-on-one -on -one opportunity that I think deserves a round of applause. Now, the reason that this task force was created was because there were so many opportunities going on in the city. And it seemed like the different entities that were managing these opportunities were not talking, were not communicating. So you have developers who are not really communicating well with contractors, who are not really communicating well with our trade unionists, who aren't communicating with the general public at large at all. So council president says, hey, we need to bring all of these folks together under the same roof so that we can all hear the same message and ask the same questions. Now, let me tell you about a question. There is no such thing as a bad question. I'm going to say that again for this side of the room. There's no such thing as a bad question. So if you have a question in your mind and you say, uh, my question sounds dumb, I better not ask it. I guarantee you there's somebody else in the audience who's saying in their mind, my question sounds dumb, I'd better not ask it, but it might be the answer that somebody else needs to hear. So I'm going to ask you if you have a question, 
when we open it up to the question and answer period, please go to that microphone and ask your question. This, we're going to call this Vegas, ladies and gentlemen. This is the safe space where you can ask whatever question you have on your mind. Now, the only thing that I'm going to ask you to do is to be respectful of our developers, contractors, trade unionists, and the general public, respectful of each other. This is going to be a room of respect. Can I get that agreement from everyone? I almost believed you. I almost believe you. I'll ask the question again. Can I get that agreement from everyone in the room? Even in the back over there. All right. Now, there we go. So today, uh, we will, I'm going to just go through the agenda briefly. We'll have introductions of our unions, our contractors, developers, and different city of Detroit departments, I'm understanding, are here in the room. And then we're going to have three main presentations. One by Rich Bardelli. Rich, where are you? Right next to me. There's Rich, a Ford Motor Company, who's going to talk to us, as you can see on the screen, the Ford Corktown Investment. Let's have a round of applause for that. <laughs> right? Because this is breathing life into a neighborhood of our city that we thought was dead on the vine. Now, I will, in full disclosure, tell you, I'm a retiree of Ford Motor Company after 30 years, so I am a little biased. I am a little biased, but I did say this. When Ford was coming in with this project, I told everyone that you're going to see a developer that's going to have behavior unlike many other developers. They're going to work very closely with the community. They're going to be very um, responsive and receptive to the community needs. So I'm hoping if you've interacted with Ford that the words that I said are coming true. I'm hoping that, right? Also, we're going to hear from uh, Ford Land, who's going to talk. Oh, no, that's part of the presentation. So you're going to talk about program planning and estimating from Ford Land and the train station project, the hiring plans. How many people are interested in being hired for the Corktown development? Let me see your hand. All right, so we got quite a few folks who, who are interested in that part of your presentation, Rich. And then we're going to move on and we'll hear from Stacy Clayton, who is Vice President of Government and Community Affairs for Detroit Renewable Energy. Stacy, where are you? You're sitting over there. I'm going to have to get you over here on the panel, right? And Stacy's going to talk to us about a, get, a great project that's happening over on the very near east side of our city that you're going to want to know about because you want to know how you can become involved in that project as well. And then we'll hear from Jason Marine of Troxel Axel LLC. And this is a project that's happening in our neighborhood, 5151 Bellevue. Who knows the east side like I do? Yes, 5151 Bellevue. Now that's a project that's happening in the neighborhood. So for folks who say, ah, they're just focusing on downtown and midtown, we're here to tell you today, we're in Corktown, we're on the east side. All over town, there is development going on, and you can hear about it today at the City of Detroit Skilled Trades Task Force, okay? After we do that, we'll have a Q&A, we'll have a discussion about the apprenticeship programs with an update on those as well. How many folks are here today looking to get involved in an apprenticeship program? All right, so we got a few folks there. Yeah, let's give them a round of applause. And I want to tell you, this can be your first step toward doing that. Let me ask this question. How many folks, as a result of attending this Skill Trades Task Force, got involved in an apprenticeship? I think I saw a couple of folks. I'm going to need for more of those folks who have gotten involved because I know of some who have to start attending this meeting because I need for them to be able to tell their story to those of you who are on the front end of that. Because you need to know that anybody can engage in an apprenticeship. It doesn't require a certain height, a certain weight, a certain hair color. 
If it did, I think I'd be out of luck. Out of luck. Right? Anyone can apply and anyone can attend an apprenticeship. It's open to everyone. In this Skilled Trades Task Force, we will talk about some of the barriers that occur for women, for youth, for people of color, in getting in an apprenticeship. But this Skilled Trades Task Force is here to knock those barriers down. As a result of this Skilled Trades Task Force, we've been able to acquire a certain amount of money in the city budget to provide wraparound services to folks who are going into the apprenticeship programs. So if you need transportation, we get you bus tickets. If you need help with ID, we help you get ID. If you need um, childcare for your children while you're in the apprenticeship program, we provide that for you. So we're trying to be as responsive as possible so that you know what's going on and you have access to what you need. We're going to talk a little bit about 2019 and some of the changes that will occur to the Skilled Trades Task Force process. And we're going to give you very, very many chances to ask any question that you might have about our process. Now, it gives me the esteemed pleasure and honor, as I told you earlier, to introduce you to our Detroit City Council President, Brenda Jones. Oh, you can do better than that. Yeah. Good afternoon to everyone. So it is an honor for me to be here amongst all of the skilled trades people, Ford, um, and our other guest speakers for today. I'm not going to do a speech because Stephen has already done it for me. So thank you all for being here. I'm going to move on with the agenda. And I think that is the introduction. Introduction. So I'm going to do an introduction of the people that are sitting up here. I want to thank IBEW for welcoming us into their home today, their comfortable home. Um, thank you for allowing us to grace your space, use up your electricity and your heat. So thank you so much. Um, and so we will, on that note, start off with IBEW down on that end with an introduction of um, your union and if you are a contractor or developer, city department, um, and I might have some city departments in the audience and if I do, and if you are a union or a contractor, please introduce yourself even if you are in the audience. And so I'm going to begin right there. It's on? There you go. All right. Uh, thank you again, Ma Madam President, uh, for all your hard work in all these years, over a decade long of uh, ho having these skilled trade task force and putting it out into the community. And uh, we are a zero net energy center here at the IBEW, which means that uh, we capture the sunlight for our electricity and we use the earth's temperature to heat and cool the, the building. So we've spent... Uh, uh, an enormous amount of energy and, and, and uh, time and money to make this a place where the community can meet and uh, discuss uh, projects. So uh, we've had uh, many months of, of discussions with Ford Motor Company here, so I thought it'd be appropriate to have Ford Motor Company come back and, and give us a presentation. So it just worked out uh, very well for everybody and all parties included. Uh, so, again, my name is Rick Pruce. I'm with the International Brother of Electrical Workers, Local 58. We have three different apprenticeship programs that we offer that are, you, you can go online to get access to those apprenticeships. Uh, the address to our, uh, our website is DetroitEITC.org. Again, Detroit, D-E-T-R-O-I-T-E-I-T-C. I don't see anybody writing down. 
I don't see anybody interested in joining the IBW. Maybe I need to, okay, I'm, I'm a, oh, I see one person back there. Okay, all right. Okay, there's two people. All right, I got two people that are paying attention. Thank you, thank you for that. I'll tell you this, uh, if, if you are not interested in joining the IBW, I'm sure there might be somebody in your family or friends in your network on social media that would appreciate having the information that you are now gonna be getting. So please write it down, DetroitEITC.org, tell a friend, thank you. So before he goes um, to the next, before we go to the next person, if anybody ever been to a council meeting, they know that I'm strict on time and I couldn't do it to him because I'm in his house, but you have two minutes to introduce yourself and talk about your, your union or whatever you want to do in two minutes. In two minutes, pass the mic on to the next person. And I know how to cut you off. So right. it's on you, you got two minutes. All right, thank you, Madam President. Uh, my name is Adrian Bonds. I'm president of Roofers Local 149. Uh, we have a three-year apprenticeship. Well, oh, I should take that back, a four-year apprenticeship. I'm sorry. Um, earn while you learn. Um, you can reach me at 313-961-6093. Uh, Thank you. Uh, I beat that. That was within your two minutes. Good job. Good evening, everybody. My name is Dennis Aguirre. I'm the president of Onion Workers Local 25. Uh, we cover the whole lower peninsula of Michigan, except for four counties, so 64 counties. We accept applications into our apprenticeship program all year long. You can go to our website, print off the application at www.ironworkers, with an S, 25.org. Again, that's www.ironworkers, with an S, 25.org. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Reginald Kearney, Vice President of Labor's Local 1191. We also have an apprenticeship program, but it works a little different than my counterparts. Uh, you may get hired with a contractor, maybe as an apprentice, or maybe as a journeyman. It depends on your work ethic and how you present yourself to that contractor. Um, and also, once you become a member, you are still allowed to take those classes. Our website is laborslocal1191.org. And I also have gentlemen in the audience that will be handing out cards or information that you need. Thank you. So let me, let me give it some more housekeeping rules. So we don't speak out from the audience. We raise our hand when we want to speak, because if everybody speak at the same time, we can all sing together, but we truly cannot all speak together. And if you will go to the mic, because we are being taped, and in order for the people to hear you at home, if they're not here, it needs to go through the mic. So the mic is right behind you. Um, and, and I just have to do that, everybody. Not I'm, I'm probably the nicest person you could meet, but I have to run an orderly meeting or somebody is going to beat me up from the audience, and I don't want to get beat up. So I want to run this as orderly as possible so that we can hear everybody and get all the questions answered, and I guarantee you we will do that. So if you guys just work with me, um, I'll make sure everybody is heard and everybody's questions is answered. So you wanted him to repeat something. So can you repeat, uh, was it the phone number you gave or website. whatever, website address? The website is laborslocal1191.org. Laborslocal1191.org. Hello everyone. I am Adrian Bennett. I'm the president and CEO of Ben Kari Plumbing and Water Conservation. I'm also the licensed master plumber and licensed plumbing contractor for the company. We're Detroit based and we do commercials, residential, um, institutional, pretty much anything that requires plumbing we can handle it. And now we're getting into water conservation, getting rid of all the lead pipe. Thank you. Thank you, Adrian. You're welcome. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, I'm Rich Bardelli. I'm with uh, Ford Land, uh, the real estate and construction arm for Ford Motor Company, uh, the developer of um, our Corktown investments, uh, with uh, the train station being the big um, project we're working on. Uh, Madam President, thank you for having us, and we really look forward to presenting our project to you um, and, and to all the trades, uh, so thank you. Good afternoon. 
I'm uh, Jeff McCarthy. I'm with the Operating Engineers Local 324. Our members uh, over the entire state of Michigan, from Copper Harbor to Monroe, from Detroit to, to Muskegon, uh, operate cranes, heavy construction equipment, repair cranes and heavy con construction equipment, and also maintain uh, power plants and uh, building boiler systems in most of the buildings here downtown and a lot of plants uh, outstate. Uh, we operate five apprenticeship programs in the various disciplines. Within that, anyone interested, uh, we do take applications at a couple of points during uh, the year for each of those programs. Anyone interested, uh, uh, operating engineers 324.org, or excuse me, OE324.org. Five, uh, five characters, OE324.org. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Prudence Rose. I'm with Must Careers. Must, management and union serving together. When you think of must, think of the building trades, think of all the different apprenticeship programs that are available to you in the building trades. And I'm here, I brought brochures for everyone. I'm not gonna take your time now, I'll be here later to talk to anyone who wants to ask questions, but please pick up a brochure and we'll talk about how you can get into the building trades and you, this is an apprenticeship opportunity and it's must careers. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Rodney Nolan, and I'm with the City of Detroit Civil Rights Inclusion and Opportunity Office, formerly known as the Human Rights Office. I am a compliance officer, and that title will be changing in the near future. Um, we are gonna be concentrating on how we can make sure that inclusion of the City of Detroit residents is happening on these different projects. My job as a compliance officer is to look at and monitor and make sure that Ford Motor Company as a developer is actually meeting that goal pursuant to the executive order 2016-1, which states that they have to have 51% of the hours worked on this project be uh, Detroit residents. Okay. Ooh. I will not fall this day. Any other unions and contractors in the audience? Can you, even if you want to come up here, you can take my mic. Thanks. How you doing? Can you hear me? Uh, I'm Mo with uh, Mo Hamid with uh, Carpenters and Millwrights. With Carpenters and Millwrights, uh, we have a four-year apprenticeship in each school. We take applications every Wednesday. If you want to call 586-756. 3610. You can get all the information at our uh, office in Warren. And I take great pleasure in knowing that we're going to build a 90,000 square foot training center in Detroit. Hopefully, in the next year, we're going to start the program. Thank you very much. 586 756 3610. Okay, I'm going to do this housekeeping just one more time. <laughs> Just one more time now, I need y'all to work with me now. We will not speak from the audience because we want everybody to be able to get the information. If you raise your hand or go to the mic, we will make sure that your question, even if it's, they have to come back up to repeat the phone number because I want everyone to be in order. And if everybody do that at one time, we might have five people saying, one repeat something at one time so please work with me we're gonna get through this thank you all any uh yes, this, i'm melody mcgee i'm with mca detroit and i'm representing local 636 which are the pipe fitters and local 98 which are the uh, plumbers we have a five-year program also and it is a earn as you learn program and uh, we accepted our applications already for you for this year, but we do accept applications online um, with the plumbers. You can go to www.plumbers98tc.org. And we do, um, you can also go online for the pipe fitters with www.pipefitters636tc.org just to review the information. If you have any questions, I will be here afterwards to answer any questions. Thank you. So I'm gonna change this a little, okay. If you guys wanna come up to this mic, that way everybody don't have to, so you can come up here, take my mic and introduce yourself, that way everybody don't have to break their neck to look back at you all. You're good. 
Hi, I'm, <coughs> I'm Laura Kopeck, and I also work with MCA Detroit with the plumbers and pipe fitters. And the plumbers does accept applications year-round, 24-7 online. And if you need to contact us at any time, contact 313-341-7661. Uh, extension 202 or you can talk to uh, Della Della Pella and we'll provide whatever information you need and pamphlets or brochures that uh, you can uh, have mailed to you at your disposal. Thank you. Testing, testing. Good evening everyone. Uh, my name is Grayton Little. I'm with Bosco of Michigan. We are an emerging real estate, full real estate development firm. We have some projects that will be coming before this body of uh, city council. And so I came here this evening to kind of take notes to be able to do it right. Um, but I'm also excited about the presentations in Corktown because we have some emerging developments within our portfolio that will be on Michigan Avenue as well. Thank you. Yeah, I definitely want to stay in good graces with this guy right here. Good evening, everyone. I'm Dennis Mitchell with Barton Mallow Company. Uh, many Many of you may know us from uh, the Little Caesars Arena project. Well, we're currently now building the Hudson uh, skyscraper as well as the Wayne County Criminal Justice Center. And I wanted to just make a quick announcement that we'll be hosting a job fair, uh, really a career expo. I won't say job fair, November 14th at Cobo Hall. So please make sure you listen to the radio, look at the billboards. There's more information. The event is called Ready, Set, build. I'll be around um, after the event, but I want to make sure that we communicated that there's a major workforce expo coming at Kobo November 14th. Good evening, everybody. How are you today? Good. My name is Kelly Miller. I am the Community Engagement Coordinator for uh, Detroit Employment Solutions Corporation. Also, um, Detroit at Work, if you guys are familiar. Um, we have three centers that are located around the city, one at Northwest Activity Center. We also have one at Sur Metro in Southwest Detroit, as well as Samaritan Center um, on the east side of Detroit. Uh, we uh, work uh, in partnership with the city of Detroit, and we provide um, various programs and services around training as well as work readiness and support services. So if anyone has uh, any questions or are looking to uh, become work ready in a variety of areas, um, please uh, be sure to see myself or someone from our staff that um, is here in the building. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Hi, my name is Stephanie Bomvalakis. I'm the Apprenticeship Coordinator with Detroit Employment Solutions Corporation. I love seeing this awesome turnout. Hi, everybody. So I wanted to announce that National Apprenticeship Week is coming up, and we have partnered with the U.S. Department of Labor Office of Apprenticeship to bring quite a few events to you around the city of Detroit. And so I have the events registered. The event on the 14th with Barton Mallow is one of them at Kobo. So if you are interested in apprenticeship or anything regarding apprenticeship and construction, I highly encourage you to go. We have flyers at the back. And so I'm gonna provide you the website with all the events that you can look up in and around the city. It's www.dol.gov slash apprenticeship slash NAW. You could even Google National Apprenticeship Week and the Department of Labor's website will pull right up. And there's a really cool interactive map. You can see all the events that we have scheduled throughout the city. And then also everybody, I created a list of all of the unions in and around Detroit with apprenticeship programs that I'm gonna make copies of and I'll have it at the back. I see everybody jotting down information very quickly. I have a very easy Excel spreadsheet because I'm a Virgo. So I have it all printed and ready to go. So I just got to snag a copier and um, that's it. And if anybody wants to chat with me, I will hang around. Thank you. Thank you. Let me um, 
say to everyone, please just introduce yourself. If everyone have an agenda, we have announcements and questions and answers will be followed. So if you want to move the agenda the way we kind of have it. So if you come up and just introduce yourself, if you, your union, your contractor, um, your website, your phone number, and we can move on. Thank you. Hello, my name is Renard Richmond, and I'm from Sir Metro Detroit, where we have an apprenticeship readiness program. And I'll just say that the phone number is 313-945-5200. And you can reach us if you want to be a start your career in the construction as an apprentice. Thank you. everyone, I'm Leisha Lyons-Williams. I'm at the back, DetroitAtWork.com. See me and I'll answer all of your questions at that time. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Arthur Edge. I work for the City of Detroit Building Safety Engineering, supervisor in that division. Um, I was told to be here today, so I here, I got the word. But the only thing she said, make it short, but I'm going to tell everybody this. If you have any skills in the building trade, the city is hiring building inspectors. They start out at $64,000 a year. So go to the website and apply. Thank you. Hello, everybody. <clears throat> yeah. All right, my name is Dino Van. Uh, I'm the founder and executive director of STEEP. STEEP is Skilled Trade Enrollment Assistance Program. That's exactly what we do. I encourage you, if you're interested in getting into the skilled trades, I encourage you to go to STEEP.org. STEEP is a for us, by us program. When I say that, I mean it's built by the people. It's built for the people. We have 100% success rate. 100% mean everybody that came through our program. Everybody that graduated our program passed a test and was accepted into the apprenticeship of their choice. Not only were they accepted, but they're working. Not only are they working, but they're making real good money. So like I said, I encourage you to look steep.org, check us out, check our media out. We made a whole lot of publications, Fox 2 News, uh, District Detroit, uh, Free Press, every single one of them. Um, I have information in the back. and. Um, Hopefully you will look into it. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Jim Arini. I'm the uh, apprentice coordinator and stationary training director for Local 324, the operating engineers. Um, Jeff McCarthy gave a brief overview of what we do. I wanted to make sure everybody's aware of our training center just around the corner here on Howard Street. Um, it's open to the public, so you don't have to be a member to come to school there. There's a couple of folks that have been through our program that are in the crowd tonight. Um, we are licensed with the state of Michigan and recognized by the city of Detroit so that if you complete one of our programs, you're allowed to test for the city of Detroit high pressure boiler operator license or third class refrigeration operators licenses. We also have a stationary apprenticeship. We are going to be accepting applications early spring, probably either late February, March, somewhere in there. We haven't decided yet. If you'd like information about either our classes or our apprenticeship, you can call 313-532-5345. That's 313-532-5345. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So I think y'all think I'm being a little difficult and I'm not because you all will be able to ask all the questions that you want they will be get, able to give you all of the information about the apprenticeship program. All of that is on the agenda. And so we will get to all of that. I just want to kind of like follow the agenda as it is. And so next on the agenda is presentation from Ford Motor Company. And I will pass the mic. Thank you, Madam President. I appreciate it. Um, thank you, too, to all of the skilled trades, apprentice programs. Um, again, Rick, thank you for having us. Uh, this might be, what, 
fourth, fifth time, sixth time <laughs> that we've presented in uh, your building. Um, what a great facility uh, that we have here. Um, so thanks again for having us. Uh, I do want to introduce a couple other people that um, have come from Ford and uh, the Chrisman Brinker team. Um, Chris Johnson, who is our Director of Construction Services, um, who will be able to help answer some questions uh, as we um, get into the question and answer phase after we're done with our presentation. Then also Ron Staley, who's Vice President of Chrisman and part of the Chrisman Brinker team, that's going to help deliver our project here and again will help us talk about construction as we move forward. Um, so I'll be going through um, our Corktown investment, talk about where we're at today. Uh, we'll just give a, an overview of where we're, what we're doing and what the program is, uh, and then also talk about you know hours and things like that um, from a construction standpoint, uh, and then hopefully be able to learn more about um, the this council's um, where they're headed and how we can make sure we're part of what's going on to make sure we're bringing um, all of the community back into into our project here. Um, I think as Stephen had said earlier, you know, we're really um, not just a developer, uh, and I, I think we've really tried to work hard to make sure everybody um, feels and, and understands us as part of the community. Um, we're all here together. Um, we're gonna be here a long time. We want you to be part of what we're doing. Um, so as we take you through this, we'll see how how much you mean to us and how much hopefully we can mean to you and bring bring you all along on this journey that we're going to take and and bringing back a lot of part the parts of Corktown. So really quickly uh, you know we're, we're coming to Corktown but our, you know our major um, headquarters right is in Dearborn um, all of our engineering and, and work is being done there but here in Corktown um, we're bringing to a new center of innovation around mobility um, and this connection about what we're doing here in Detroit now um, is to be this new center where we were the Motor City we are the Motor City and now we're gonna bring this forward on this next wave of innovation and um, this is now gonna be the place where this all happens for for us and hopefully this this new wave of innovation for mobility oops am I going the wrong way hello Oh, all right, and I'm done. So everybody, thank you. It was nice talking to everybody today. All right, hold on. There we go. Should I not touch the button? Maybe, Madam President, you can hit the button for me. Um, so again, our project uh, is um, about 1.2 million square feet. It, it consists of four different buildings, one that exists today, um, and two parking structures. Uh, going around from left to right, we're in a building, uh, it's called the factory. We've uh, moved in there in May. About 200 people are in there today. Um, and that's really where we started. Um, as we sort of go next, we have, we just finished, just purchased the building behind that. It's called the Brass Factory, uh, Lincoln Brass Factory. It's um, been there for quite some time um, and we'll go through its, its history. Um, and then we have the, uh, Detroit Public School Book Depository or the Post Office Building, uh, depending on when you knew it. Um, and, uh, and then the building next to that is um, that little thing, the uh, Michigan Central Station. Yeah, that one. Um, so, you know, some great history, great community. Um, just a, a little quick note about, um, you know, Corktown. Ford Motor Company's history in Corktown, um, the Ford family's history in Corktown. Um, the Ford family came from Cork, Ireland. Um, they came and settled in Cork Town here in Detroit. Um, and Henry Ford started his motor company in Detroit. Um, so there's a lot of history there. Um, my family grew up on Rosa Parks and Michigan Avenue. My mom grew up there. Um, so I have a lot of history here. Uh, this community means a lot to me. It means a lot to our family. So it's really an honor for me to be back here and um, helping, uh, you know, bring this, this station back and this development back. Um, so again, uh, you know, talking about histor history and designations, um, there is quite a bit of history in uh, Corktown. Um, although most, a lot of the properties don't fall directly into the historic designations. Um, but they are adjacent to them and we are making sure that when we develop them, we develop them in a way that are in keeping with what uh, Corktown, the look and feel of Corktown. 
Again, a little bit of history about uh, the, the diverse history about what's happened with um, the Lincoln Brass Factory. Again, you can see in, it was built in 1847 as family homes. Most of Corktown was as things started to get developed here. Um, and went vacant a few years ago uh, due to some other issues that were with the building. And then we, have, we purchased the building um, again just, just a few months ago. Um, the Book Depository building, again, built in the mid-30s and um, had a fire back in 1987, um, really the year before the train station closed, uh, which ended up closing that building. Um, and we purchased that building back in uh, May, um, along with the train station. Again, um, really opened in 13, 1913 and 14 um, due to a fire at the existing train station uh, that forced this train station to open early. Um, uh, and then the building was closed in 88, and uh, again, Ford Motor Company purchased it back in May. So talking about the Lincoln Brass Factory, again, it sits on Rosa Parks, uh, just south of Michigan Avenue. Um, it, was, it was really built around a house, um, the Warren House, and um, who was uh, one of the people who actually started the DIA, um, owned that house. And... Um, the, the development for uh, the brass factory actually started around there. So that this picture shows the, the lots of um, that were um, all the homes that uh, now encompass the current Lincoln Brass Factory. Um, and then you can start to see in 1921, the brass factory actually started to get developed um, and started, started acquiring neighborhood sites. Um, in 1950, it grew even larger. Um, and now you can see what it looks like today. Um, so again, the, the current condition is um, it's abandoned. Uh, it has quite a few different uh, or issues environmentally. At Ford, we really want to make sure we're about um, preserving. Uh, we very rarely, and, and I think we do it too much as a, as a nation, uh, take down old buildings and you know try not to put them back. Unfortunately, this building um, has too many environmental issues that um, we're going to have to take take down. Um, like I did say, there is the Warren House um, as part of what we're looking at is um, how can we can preserve maybe some of the things that are in that house. Um, we've done some due diligence on it today that um, there's not much of the house left. You can see the roof line of it, um, but there are, there are a few little things inside that as we start to do the demolition, we'll try to preserve some of that um, and, and move those forward in the new facility. Um, if you see the peak on this in this photo, that's really where the the peak of the house is at. So, um, again, the site potential is about a four-story building that we could build there. Uh, we're very early in our planning stages. Um, again, though, you know, the, it will be a new facility, but it will be in keeping with what it looks like from a. Um, aesthetics, the look and feel, brick, you know, wood, um, open to the public, uh, you know, making sure that we have good community in and out um, as we go through. Um, the building will really be housing uh, quite a few uh, office, about 247,000 square feet of office space, along with um, commercial space, again, bringing community in and out uh, of the facility. Um, here are a few, you know, uh, renderings that we have done just to start to get some thoughts around what the the building could look like and how we would have um, some individuals coming in and out um, and really having maker space or, or some cafes and things like that where we could start to have more interaction with the community uh, along with the employees. Again, it's more about getting not our employees staying in the building, but the employees moving out and moving in um, into the environment and really being social within this community. Uh, the Book Depository, um, again, uh, a famous architect or for us, uh, Albert Kahn, and, and for the area, um, again, was a post office building, um, very, had, was connected to the train station, had a lot of, you know, took the mail back and forth. There's a tunnel that actually connects the two buildings. Um, we'll look at trying to keep that and trying to keep, uh, keep that synergy between the buildings because we'll be using the building as, you know, uh, office space. I mean, see, in 1987, there was a, a major fire. Um, actually, I was just over there again today. Um, and, you know, looking to, to restore the building um, and rehabilitate it so we can um, have those 
office people and, and uh, some more um, retail space in the facility. Um, as you can see, it's been, um, had some pretty rough times over the last 30 years when you have trees growing in the building, it's, uh, you know, it, you know it, it could be a rough one. Um, a lot of that stuff has been cleared out. We're working really hard to, to do um, our due diligence around uh, the structure. Um, we think that it's, it's salvageable. We think that there's the ability for us to, to bring this building back um, and, and make sure that it, it, we keep this historic building the way it is and uh, a building from the Albert Kahn era of design. So a great building for us to keep. Um, again, restore, you know, restore the windows, um, keep the exterior the same. Um, do some skylights and, and bring that building back. And then we would also have uh, about, you know, a little over 200,000 square feet for people, uh, office space and um, some commercial space in the basement. Um, so a great use. And again, just a rendering of, of where we're headed. Uh, Michigan Central Station, a great building. Um, and wow, you know, Back in the day when it started, uh, 4,000 people used to come through this building every day. Um, it's amazing. That equates to about 1.2 million people a year. Um, so, you know, think about all the people that came through here. And, and the stories that I've sort of been lucky because I've been able to present to the community over the last few months um, and really get to talk and meet a lot of people. Um, and not just in Corktown, but around and spending more and more time down here about just stories that people have. I'm sure that, you know, even if I came in, started chatting with most of you, you'd, you'd really see and be able to tell me stories about your families and how um, they were coming through in and out of this, this facility. Um, so it's a really honor for us to be able to bring it back. Um, again, you can see it's, um, it's had its, its difficulties over the last 30 years. There's a lot of work to be done, um, very difficult work um, and a lot of artistry that needs to be done, but we are gonna bring it back um, to its original grandeur, um, which is great for us. Um, and in the next four years, you'll, you'll see a lot of progress in, in what we're going to do there. Um, you can see one of the first things we'll be looking for is just getting temporary roofs on and, and getting, you know, this place buttoned up so that we can get it ready for its construction uh, and its restoration. Um, a lot of hard areas to get to, uh, clay tiles, uh, the, the top cornice work, all this red area is, is some areas that are really in bad shape in the building. Um, Structurally, for the most part, um, has its challenges, but is still in, in decent enough shape for us to, to sort of keep the building um, moving forward. Um, so you can see a lot of the different areas that um, in four years will have, will look brand new. Um, and Ron looks at me like, hey, brand new. It's 113 years old. Um, uh, I always love this picture in, the, in this detail, uh, just because of the artisans that, that built this building back in, 1913. I, I always joke around that, um, you know, we see graffiti artists and, you know, everyone asks, well, how did they get out there? How did they figure out how to get the graffiti on the building out in that area? And then I take people through and I'm like, think about the guys that went out on that edge, put together over 20 pieces in each section of this cornice work to build up the whole edge around this whole building. Those are true artists. Um, and I think in this room, which is what I think we really want to talk about and how we want to get, get through is to start talking about how we can start to develop more artisans um, through our community. There's a lot of work in Detroit outside of our building. I think it's a great opportunity for us to do some training and, um, and on, from a masonry standpoint. So we'll talk a little bit about that later, but um, you, know, you can start to see a lot of the work here that that's gonna, it takes. And those are true artisans that are doing that, not here only outside, but inside with the plaster work and and a lot of the terrazzo work that has to happen in the building. Um, again, you can see some of the things that were returned. Uh, that clock was a piece that was returned um, kind of back in June. Um, that goes on the carriage house, which is right below it, the picture below it, um, which was an outstanding story that we were we brought back. Um, just today, I was at. I got a call from um, a gentleman that had a house in Detroit. And he returned to us um, some medallions that were actually um, in the building 
Um, it was sort of amazing. You know, he called and he said, I just want to give them back. Um, so I met him again, just like this fellow who um, was anonymous. But, you know, people have been giving us things. And each one of those little things is so important to us um, because we need to be able to have those to be able to print them, um, 3D print them or have them remade again um, so we can put the building back the way it was. So really cool stuff. Um, and th they were so happy to, to be able to give that back to us. Again, the programming of the building, um, the building's about 650,000 square feet. Um, we would have about 100,000 or so square feet uh, in the basement or in the ground floor. Really, that ground floor is going to be community space, retail space. Um, again, this is not, this building isn't about us as a company um, and being in the building, but it's about getting uh, people in and out, right? Having the community be able to come in, use the space. Um, and have, have a really meaningful area for everybody. So it's really important for us to make sure that we can um, have that as a space that everybody feels comfortable with. We have a great park in front of there that the city owns um, that is Roosevelt Park. Then having that connection up through Michigan Avenue is just going to be some um, great things that we'll hopefully be able to activate in the future. Uh, the upper 13 floors will be office space, and then the top two floors will um, right now are programming as residential or condominiums, um, there's a thought maybe um, out of residential, maybe some hoteling or something. But as we're going through our uh, master planning right now, which will be done sometime in February, uh, we'll be able to talk about and think about exactly what we want to do and have the program for the building. Um, so again, you can see the, the event space, uh, commercial space. So you, know, you can see about 100,000 square feet or so, a little bit of office. Um, but again, a, a great space that isn't programmed for any offices that are specifically for the people in the building, but they are meant to draw people and draw our community in together. So a great space. Again, a couple, um, let's see, I might just take a second. Hello. There we go. Hopefully it doesn't pop back to the next one. So these are a couple renderings of you know what we think it's going to look like when we're done. Um, again, just you know some areas, you know, Oh, pop-up shops, I think you've seen them around town. Um, you know, so hopefully we'll be able to do some of that here. Um, the back concourse area, again, looking at, you know, maybe some market areas. I don't know if many know. So we have Eastern Market, right? Everybody knows about Eastern Market. Yeah. Does everybody know there used to be a Western Market? Yeah. So there used to be a Western Market, not actually not too far from here. Um, I think the expressway ran right through it now. Yeah. So... Um, I think one of those are our, one of our thoughts. How do we bring back some kind of market area for this side of the city um, and maybe complement some other market areas so that we can have some fresh fruit areas and fresh market areas? So some pretty cool things we're trying to think about, and you can see some of that in this rendering. Um, and then just bringing back, you know, uh, a, a vibrant place for the, the train station, which really means for our city a place for us to have, you know, that, that we're back as a city. You know, and um, this really is our icon. This is what people see when they come into the city off the expressways, and this is this is what we want to be our welcoming now into to the city, which we never had for so long. Um, so, um, lastly, uh, and Madam President, thank you for giving me a little bit more time, but um, just uh, I'll go through this, and then we'll take questions at the end around you know, where you know anything that we want to have from the building trades. But um, in big picture, we're Four years uh, uh, to complete the project, so we'll be done um, right around mid end of 2022. Um, I think the big thing here is we're, um, because of the restoration and the trades that we need, we're going to have almost three and a half million man hours of work, which translates over to almost 2,000 um, employees in construction jobs. Right? So, you know, that, that translates into a lot of um, opportunity for all of us, right, to work together and figure out how to get that done. Um, so again, some of the working hours uh, we've, we've talked about with our community uh, around 7 to 3.30. Um, we have committed to no later from 7 to 7 p.m. City ordinances let us go a little bit longer, but we're going to stay within those hours. Um, if we need to go longer, we've, we've talked with everybody about you know making the exceptions, but mostly those will be exceptions um, on what we're doing there. Um, we do have, and I'll show you just, you know, our construction trailer and lay down areas um, will be all on our property, property that we own. So we won't be impacting streets or um, where people park. All of our contractors will park on our property. Um, we'll have security for those areas and, and have all those areas 
again, the train station, um, you know, we'll start set temporary safety. We're going to start here uh, shortly within the next month or so. Um, and just to try to get the building closed in, uh, purely because it's going to take a long time to get the building dried out. Um, again, it's, it takes almost a year just to get the building ready. Uh, it's going to take 24 months, two, two full years to get all that restoration we just talked about done um, and have those trades done. Um, outside of then uh, another couple years just to get um, all the tenant work done and all the tower work done and all the interior work done. Um, some things, eight acres of masonry work, two acres of plaster work, you know, um, over 1,200 windows. I know the windows have been a big thing. Um, they're just not historic, and we're going to have to to replace them. Um, and we we actually are, are, have been asked by uh, Council Member Tate to, to talk about, you know, a way to reuse those windows in some way, and um, we're, we're definitely going to work with him to, to help uh, see if there's a way to, to recycle those. Or it's it's got to be a great opportunity just for figure out something there. Um, again, the post office will start some temporary uh, enclosures uh, just to get a roof on it and get it dried out too. Um, every year there's probably about three or four feet of water in the basement of there. Um, we've kept it pretty much pumped out for this year, um, so we're going to try to make sure it stays dry. Um, major construction to start there, hopefully beginning of next year. Um, and then the leak and brass factory will start demo at the end of this year. Uh, a huge plan is being put in place on the demolition. Um, our environmental plan is um, going to be very extensive to make sure that we're taking care of the community uh, and on any other kind of, um, uh, you know, dust mitigation and things like that. So, um, so a lot, a lot to do here. I know there's going to be a lot of questions. Uh, I'll make sure everybody has their time on, on their presentations. And we'll, um, again, the three of us are here to answer anything as we move forward uh, later on. So thank you very much. I really appreciate all the time, and I appreciate being able to work with everybody as we move forward. So thank you. Thank you. I'm going to move to the next presentation. And that is none other than Stacy Clayton with Detroit Renewable Energy, the Vice President of Government and Community Affairs. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Okay, um, good to see everyone. I see some familiar faces, old friends out there. Okay, okay. Um, thank you to Council President Jones, Ms. Linda Wesley, for the opportunity to speak to you today. Uh, my name is Stacy Clayton. I am Vice President of Government and Community Affairs for Detroit Renewable Energy. Detroit Renewable Energy consists of Detroit Renewable Power, Detroit Thermal, and Hamtramck Energy Services. We are a waste to energy company. The waste that's burned at Detroit Power provides steam to the GM Hamtramck Assembly, Detroit Thermal, and DTE. Each of our facilities is union operated. Operating engineers 324, you heard from Jeff McCarthy earlier. They're at DRP and UWUA Local 223 are at DT and Hamtramck Energy Services. I have a couple of workers from Detroit Thermal and DRP. Uh, Ms. Marna Muhammad is the plant manager for Detroit Thermal. I'm gonna ask her to come up and say a few words. And then also, Jeff Washington is here from Detroit Renewable Power. And we have a brief video we'd like to show you all from Operating Engineers 324. You're turning solid waste into energy and this is going to be around for a while. We have to bring in waste to produce the steam and electricity as the byproduct of that so we have municipal solid waste come across the scales it gets uh, dumped in a municipal solid waste storage area uh, the, the waste process begins uh, basically it's shredding of the garbage to take it down to a refuse derived fuel which takes it to a small particle so that it can be transported to the boilers to be used as boiler fuel. Uh, after the processing part, like I said, it goes to the boilers uh, onto a traveling grate where we use over fire and under grate air that uh, uh, combusts the fuel into a, uh, to an ash uh, byproduct and that uh, as we're burning the fuel, steam is created. The steam is used to 
uh, go through a steam turbine, and we also have 140 steam customers in the downtown loop where the steam's distributed for those customers to use in the, uh, for heating and cooling. We're not just a garbage factory. This is an energy plant. We generate electricity. We serve the public. There's so much being done in this facility, um, creating electricity, steam, uh, recycling uh, uh, metals. It's, it's, a, it's a good facility, and I think there's going to be more of them in the future. A lot of people take this place for granted, this facility for granted. The main thing is to keep equipment up and running at its efficiency so we can move it, process it, burn it, make steam, electricity, and keep it moving. 24 7. This facility is important because it employs a grave many people and behind us is our families. <laughs> we're family. Sometimes we hear more than we with our families. We need a good team atmosphere. We need well-trained employees because uh, the reliability of uh, our steam and electricity are very important for the downtown businesses and for the uh, electrical grid. I think the uniqueness of our business is that we cover uh, so many areas that you know, local 324 uh, trains for. We have heavy equipment operators, heavy equipment mechanics, we have uh, uh, licensed boiler operators, we have millwrights, and we have a lot of trained technicians here that have all uh, received training at local 324. I believe that relationship that we've established years ago and that we're gonna keep going forward is what one of the reasons that we're so successful. Being in the union provides a, a comfortable living, uh, uh, comfortable benefits, uh, just, you're able to provide everything for your family. It's just all around good, great thing to, to be a part of. Uh, this is one of Detroit's diamonds in the rough that no one really knows about yet. You know, and we explain it over and over and over again, but we're gonna get the message out. They're gonna get it. So I hope you all learned a little bit more about Detroit Renewable Power. A lot of people kind of know us as the incinerator. Um, I always like to say there's a second part to the story, though, and no offense to Jeff and um, operating engineers, but I was just so impressed when I began working for Detroit Renewable Energy, and I found out that the plant manager for Detroit Thermal was this wonderful lady right here, Miss Marta Muhammad. And so if you just want to come up and tell a little bit about working at Detroit Thermal. And, thank you. and then Jeff will finish with you to say a few words about operating engineers. Thank you very much for this opportunity. As she said, my name is uh, Marna Mohammed. I am the plant manager for Detroit Thermal. We are a heating plant and we produce steam with our boilers that, and we supply that steam to our customers in the downtown area. And those customers use our steam for various purposes. I also wanted to thank you all for this wonderful opportunity uh, because I myself started as an apprentice back when it was local 540, 547 and I went through their four year apprenticeship uh, became an employee as an operator at Detroit Thermal, worked my way up to a uh, shift supervisor, and a couple of years ago I became plant manager. So they have a, a bunch of opportunities here for everybody. I, I pray that you all are able to take advantage of some of those. Thank you. Hello everyone. My name is Jeffrey Washington. I uh, work at Detroit Renewable Power. I'm also the chief steward at the plant, um, operating engineers uh, 324. Started off at the plant, came in as an apprentice, and uh, there's truly, truly opportunities in, in the skilled trade. Um, I never thought that I would get this far and making a great living for my family and now my grandkids. Um, and I'm ecstatic to see this type of venue come together. Thank you. Thank you again. And I know everyone now wants to come work at Detroit Renewable Energy. If you are interested, our website is DetroitRenewableEnergy.com. If you want more information about positions that are available, you can send your resume or just an inquiry to info at DetroitRenewable.com, DetroitRenewable.com. Thank you. Okay, also, um, I'm gonna let, 
also operate an engineer. And you know, when you have relationships with people and they're sitting up here with you, you also give them the opportunity to comment as well. And then we have great relationships. I, there won't be any, uh, there won't be any counterpoint. I, I agree 100%, of course. I mean, it's a great partnership between the operating engineers and DRP. And I would encourage anybody that's looking for a career to, to strongly consider applying for a job at DRP. You can start in an entry level position and Ms. Mohammed is, is a case study. She is a plant manager at this point. So there's, the sky's the limit. Our training facility, uh, both of our training facilities absolutely feed directly into to, uh, what DRP does and give you every opportunity to climb that ladder. Um, lastly, just on the whole idea of a waste to energy plant, um, I, I, I don't even know where to start trying to, to explain how cutting edge that plant really is. And, and, you know, the stereotype of Detroit is often far, far from reality. And that plant is really an example of that. Um, that plant was built back in the 1980s and, and today produces power and steam. 60, it mentioned electricity, about 60,000 homes that that plant can provide electricity for. So that's a, that's a pretty good sized plant. Um, being on the cutting edge, waste to energy, uh, last year uh, there was a city in China that announced that they were going to build the largest waste to energy facility in the world uh, to be completed in 2019, not to be outdone, the city of Dubai. Uh, I don't know if anybody knows anything about Dubai, but that is a cutting edge city as if there ever was one. They're building a plant now that's bigger than the one being built in China. But here Detroit was on board in 1985. So that, that plan is, is far ahead of its time. And, and as Jeff said in the video, it really is a diamond in the rough and something Detroit should be proud of. Um, and great opportunities exist there. So hats off to everyone that, that keeps that place going. Thank you. Okay. Following the agenda, we will, um, and I don't think Jason Maureen is here, so I am going to move on to um, questions and answers for the developers. As I do that, if you have any questions, if you will, I don't like, I, I have a mic there, but I'm gonna ask if you will come up here and start making a line because people, when they um, are talking, people turn in their head trying to look at them. And so I want you to be able to see the person without having to turn your head. So if you have any questions, if you come up here, um, and direct your questions to whomever you have a question for. Um, if you have any questions, this is your opportunity. I'm gonna tell you what I always say. This is your meeting. I'm running it, but it's your meeting. I'm putting it, we, we have this meeting for you all to get the information that you need to be able to get into the skilled trades, to be able to get these opportunities I can't answer your question. And what I always say is no question is a dumb question other than the question you sit right there and don't ask. Because nine times out of 10, if you have that question, somebody else has it and says, that's a dumb question, I ain't gonna ask it. So if you have a question, we're family in here. Come up and ask your question so that we can get an answer for you to that question. Um, as People are coming forth to ask their questions. I would like to acknowledge Tyrone Winfrey. I did see him and I know he did not introduce himself and he does quite a few um, career uh, job fairs. And also uh, I'm gonna let him tell you what he does after you ask the, que ask the questions you have. And then I also know that we have Myra Lee and I think she is out in the Hall, and she is from Congresswoman Brenda Lawrence's office, and Congresswoman Brenda Lawrence has been working on skill trades as well in D.C. and making sure we get the money that we need here. So here is your opportunity to ask the questions that you want to ask of the people that you want to ask the questions of. I'm from the audience, it's your opportunity. Good afternoon again, and thank you, Council President, for asking me to be here. I don't have a question, I just have a statement to you all. 
Uh, I told you what I do and about the opportunities in building safety, that there are jobs there available. But in my department, and when I come to this meeting, I emphasize on this. You have some people up here, Ford Motor Company, they talked about the new Hudson's building, but also there's a great amount of development going on in this city. And they're going to need people to do those jobs. And those jobs are yours if you want them. If not, somebody else is going to be coming in to do them. People are coming to Building Safety, BC, what we call it, every day with plans and bringing plans in on carts. We have updated our systems where we've taken the plans in uh, email, uh, what they're calling e-file. But those jobs are coming and they're gonna need people to do those jobs. So this is your opportunity with whatever trade you may wanna go into. And if you go into a trade, I said $64,000 what building inspectors are making, you can go into the trade and make $100,000 a year if you wanna do that or carry it to the next level and become a general contractor or whatever trade you wanna go into. So this opportunity is here. This great lady here is bringing this opportunity to you every month. So you need to take advantage of it. Thank you. Next. Hello, everyone. I have two questions real quick. Um, my name is Angela Boone, and I am the CEO of AR Boone Construction. And we do daily and final cleaning. So my question is, too, would I have to be in the union to do work for Ford or any of the developers out here. And also, um, I'm also a lead abatement supervisor, so go right ahead. Yeah, I don't, Chris, do you mind if, um, maybe, we'll, maybe Ron and Chris, if you wanna just come up and we can help answer them as we go. It's that time of the year, static electricity, uh, how appropriate in the IBW Just Hall. Just know Chris went to Purdue. Uh, so yeah, so Chris any Michigan fans, any Michigan fans out there? You're welcome. Anybody? <laughs> a proud Boilermaker graduate, played football at Purdue, last team to beat Ohio State, and they were the number two team in 1984. I was on the team, and we were at West Lafayette and watched the game Saturday night. And so for all you Michigan fans, I got to tell you, I hate to say it, but go blue, because I love beating Ohio State more than Michigan. Anyway. My name is Chris Johnson. I'm the director of construction services at Ford Motor, Ford Land. Um, work behind the scenes with Rich. And thank you, Madam President, and all the trades reps. I do all the interface with the uh, building trades, the local and the international. I'm the Ford representative on the NMAPC, which is uh, what Ford is pursuant to. So to answer uh, your question, yes, uh, we do require that all of our contractors, our generals and subs, um, our use union labor, Ford is very passionate about that, and, and, that's, and, and we are pursuant to the NMA, so we're gonna do this project. We've petitioned the NMAPC for, uh, to do this under that project labor agreement, and uh, that's what we stand by. So while I'm up here, do we, and I also, I'm very, I'm very passionate about this. My son is a proud member of Millwrights 1102, graduated a couple years ago, so. Um, that, again, it's personal for me. You know, there's, there's, as Mr. Edge said, this is an unprecedented time in Detroit for construction. Uh, if you look at the volume of work, the bridge hasn't even been mentioned. That's starting. So, there, this is, uh, this is an unprecedented time, um, and the opportunities are m many. So, any other questions on any of the union interface or trades while I'm standing up here? Sure. Have him come up, Chris. Chris. So I need you to come to the mic. Sorry, ma'am. Okay, I was just, I was just wondering. Uh, I'm a member of IBEW. Now, as the head of construction, will you be going through the hall, or will you hire? Will they build a list of companies that are doing the contract work, the individual IT work? IT work. Yeah, well, uh, I've worked Motor City. I've worked on the LCA, so I know I worked for a company there, but I don't know if there's a contractor's list yet. Oh, when you put we're, together, we're working through our contractors list now and our sourcing models on everything. Okay. Um, there will be. Uh, what we're going to look to do is have um, 
you know, some job fairs and some hiring uh, halls okay. so that we can bring together okay. um, what's going on. I, I think we'd also like to use this forum, Madam President, um, in the coming months to bring that here, even have, you know, I, I see areas in the back where we could bring, um, when we start to do our bid processes and things like that, mm -hmm. um, you know, we can bring that here and make sure everybody understands, you know, our timelines. Because we're still working through our timeline on when, when we're going to do the construction and when we're going to bid out our packages. Um, we've done a small bid pack to do some make safe stuff right now. Mm -hmm. um, Adrian, I think, knows. Or, um, yes. She was on our bid list, and it's a unique uh, opportunity. We met at the Detroit Homecoming, right? Um, had never met before. Met at the homecoming, got to know each other for a quick second, um, and we made sure she was on the bid list. And she, uh, I know they came out and bid the job um, a couple weeks ago, and we'll be seeing those. So I think those opportunities um, are, are what we want to try to keep fostering through th this process mm -hmm. and help those questions. Okay. okay. Thank you. And then let me also say that if you are interested in an apprenticeship program so that you can get these opportunities with these um, employers, um, unions, developers, whomever, um, this is the time that you get that training because those jobs are coming. Those careers are coming. I, I don't call them jobs. I call them careers because once you get into that trade, you have that trade, and no one can take that away from you. Um, and I know, she, was your question answered, young lady? No. Come, come back up to the mic for me, please. Thank you. My question was, okay, I'm a contractor, okay? So, do I have to be union as a contractor, or I just have to hire union and pay prevailing wages? That's what I need to know. Yeah, I mean, the answer is yeah. The answer is yes. You have to hire um, union trades and be signatory to the National Maintenance Agreement. Um, but you personally or your company does not have to be union. That's what I wanted right? to know. But you're, you're, the you. trades that come on site do, and you need to be signatory to that. Okay. Yeah. So, and there's some type of agreement or something that yes. we sign. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's good. Thank okay. you. Next question. Hi, my name is Ida Bird Hill. I'm president of Uplift Inc. We run a Cisco networking academy, which is the first one in a public library system in the entire country. And oftentimes when we talk about skilled trades, we never mention IT. Well, I'm assuming that Ford is going to build a very automated hybrid building for the new mobility industry. How are you going to be hiring those IT trades? Because right now, they don't really are subject to the construction unions, but we know that that service is going to be needed in that building. Yeah, again, so we, we've gone through an extensive um, community benefits uh, process mm -hmm. with um, the community and with city council and um, have, you know, pledged $5 million toward training. Um, we'll be putting together a training hall for not only IT, but higher uh, or, or um, more skilled type of or non-construction jobs, or not more skilled, okay. but non-construction jobs where um, they're, the mobility jobs right now are being developed. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll have a, a job or a, a, a hall, a job hall um, where people can come, see what jobs are available within uh, those skills um, and then what kind of training they need. Um, and then we'll, we're also looking at how to provide training for those jobs. So that's all coming in um, within, you know, the next year here as we start to do that and to have those jobs and have um, people in the community ready um, in, you know, 2022 and as we start to... to Great, because I'd like to connect with you because my first cohort graduates January 2019 and they're okay. really excited. Great. No, that would be, be great. great. Please grab me afterwards. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Next question, and Ms. Clayton, I don't know if you want to comment on anything with renewable energy, if you all are doing any IT hiring or anything. So if so, just come up and comment. Next question. Hello, everybody. I'd like to thank you guys for coming here and taking your time with us too as well. Unfortunately, I'm not like everybody else that's been here and has all these uh, prestigious titles. I'm trying to get my, my foot in the door. 
for uh, all these apprenticeships, and I've seen like a common thing like on the Detroit EITC website, um, there's aptitude testing too as well. That's a part of the apprenticeship. And I was wondering, is there any type of um, tools or any way to like outsource res uh, resources that I could use to like study for this uh, aptitude test just to be better prepared for it? I believe, I think it was Rick at the end. I didn't see him here. But that's definitely the website that he had told me about. Okay, I see several people who want to comment. I'm gonna, if you want to comment, come up, come up for me, please. Go ahead at the table. Go ahead. Uh, to answer your question, there are several things available to you. You were on the DEITC site, so did you happen to take the sample test for the um, sample math test? No, I was just looking at it right here. Uh, I had to do it on okay. a laptop, so I was going to look at it a little more in depth too, as well. But before I did that, I wanted to go ahead and uh, just study for that too, as well. Okay, that's a good indication, and that could be for any of the trades that require math. That math test is a good indication of what you need to get to help to pass the test. So if you don't pass that test, it'd be good to go to something like um, uh, different websites that have a uh, like Khan Academy. They do a lot of things that you can work on with math. There are pre-apprenticeship programs in the city of Detroit if you're unsure that you can get involved in. There, um, there's uh, the Focus Hope has a program that they, you can work on. There are a lot of different programs in the city that you can work with. If you anybody wants to know about all these different programs, because we're had time limited, I'll be here after and I can talk to you about all of them. Uh, I actually participated in the Focus Hope program, uh, good pre-apprenticeship program. However, directly to your question, um, I am applying for the electrician apprenticeship. Uh, I'm in the process. Uh, when I saw the test, the, I did the pre-test online, and four questions gave me a good idea of what I might be able to, I might, what I might be facing. However, go to job test prep. They actually have an IBEW program in there that I've been using for the last three weeks or so. Those tests are truly going to challenge you and make you remember some of the things that you may have forgotten. It's been a long time since I had done this level of math. But the, there's uh, a friend of mine found it. It cost them $80. They said, good luck. They're praying for me. But when I actually started going in there, and it's 50 or 60 lessons in there to really get you ready from everything from mechanical concepts all the way down to your four basic math uh, problems all the way back up again. Okay. It will get you ready. Okay. And I take the website. test tomorrow. Okay. Job okay. test prep. And that's the website. That's, that is the name of the company. Not only this is for the IBEW specific, but there are also other tests on there that if you're in a different apprenticeship program, you might want to try and look on there as well. Okay. And just just to let you know, the iron workers we use the work key two test. So if you, work keys two test. Okay. Uh, oh, then I should be good. I got to go on that. So, so let me ask you to speak into the mic so that everybody can hear your question. All righty. My question was just uh, outside resources to be able to study for um, the apprenticeship, uh, the test for the apprenticeships, the after two tests. That's the word I was looking for. And Madam President, may I add that the plumbers require the keys test as well. Okay. Well, I got that and I got a gold too, and it's under two years, so I'm good. Gold, gold. Operators are work keys as well from, I think, 11th grade. I think you take those now. Okay. Well, thank you guys very much for your guys' time. Okay. Hold on. There's a line. Uh, you, you give us a, you, okay, come on. Again, my name is Dino Van. Uh, a little bit earlier, when I spoke about the skilled trade enrollment assistance program, that's what we specialize in. Um, the biggest barrier in the city of Detroit is getting past um, the requirements to actually get into the skilled trades. So we can talk about skilled trades all day, but there's actually requirements. It's not only the math test. Um, it's a lot of requirements, um, you know, that kind of limit us. So we put together a program for the people that go through these type of struggles, you know, people that don't have a driver's license, people don't have a GED, people don't have a diploma, people don't have a birth certificate, people that just don't know how to get into the trade. They come to us, that's what we specialize in. 
Uh, we don't necessarily specialize in people. You already got it together, that's good. Go down there and apply or whatever. But for the people that may struggle, may struggle in math, a little bit earlier when I said 100%, that's what I meant. I mean, every person that graduated from our program, they ace their test. They ace their test. And that's my president right there, um, Dennis Aguirre. He's the president of my local. I'm an iron worker. I'm a local 25 iron worker. Uh, so he can attest to what I'm saying. Every single person that um, went through our program aced their test. I'm talking about top 10. You know what I mean? So when going through the math programs, if anyone don't know, there is a program that's out here that's designed especially for you. Whatever position you're in, whatever spots you're in, that's what we're there for. We're there to take you from wherever you are to where you need to be so that you actually can take advantage of these opportunities. Um, but like I said, look us up at um, steep.org. I'll answer your questions if President Brenda Jones let me. Um, okay. So, again, we got to come to the mic. So, let me also say this. Ford is here. Ford um, will be receiving tax abatement. And there is... Um, 51, is your question about his? Yes. So hold on for a minute. 51% of Detroit residents should be hired on this job. I'm going to let Ford talk about maintaining and I'll talk about the 51%. We do have someone from Creo here, but I'm going to let Ford talk about it. Well, it, it thank you, Madam President. Um, it, that's uh, really a critical part of what we want to make sure we do. Um, Having uh, a good program in place, um, making sure that we're looking at every part of um, every trade that's going to be uh, be hired on site. Um, so, as part of when we look at uh, the companies that come to to bid on our jobs, um, one of the requirements is that they tell us what their uh, local um, participation is from the community um, in Detroit. Um, we're also bound um, by 31% uh, Detroit-based or 30% Detroit-based companies. Um, we also have a 50% a, a base with Wayne County. Um, so, again, it, as part of what we do, uh, it, it doesn't matter what trade it is. When they come in, they have to tell us exactly um, who they're hiring, um, how they're going to get to the 51%. Um, and you know, one of the things that we want to make sure we're doing too is um, if there's an issue, how, how do we make sure we uh, look at training now? Um, I think it's something that we want to work through with the city council, also with the city of Detroit's labor group um, on what, what the best training methods are to if it's an 18 month uh, labor um, uh, program that gets somebody ready for an apprentice that can get them on site that a company can hire. That's what we want to do. We want to get them into those programs. Um, again, I think for us, uh, that's important. But what's, what's more important is that we're not hiring people just for us. Um, we're, we're doing training, and we're making sure that um, the, the next generations, you know, not just four years from now, but 10, 20, 30, 40 years from now, we give people the, the ability to work. Um, and and be and so that this 51% thing, because it's important now, can go away. Um, we can get rid of it because everybody's so trained, and then we have the right amount of people here that are trained to do these jobs. And and Detroiters have these jobs, so it, it's critical. And, and that's what we're going to make sure is is happening with um, with all of our contractors that come on board. The, the two quick questions I had for the gentleman with the steep.org were. Um, for him to spell it for everyone, and then also the cost of the program. You can answer from that mic. If uh -huh. you may. Thank you. No charge. We free of charge. Um, steep is S-T-E-A-P. S-T-E-A-P. Skilled Trade Enrollment Assistance Program. And once again, we free of charge. Made up of a bunch of volunteer skilled tradesmen that's given back to the people by teaching, training, preparing, and placing. Yeah. I'm going to pause right here before you come up. I want to ask the unions if you have any questions for Ford Motor Company. Uh, I'm sorry, for, for Ford Motor Company. For Ford in this development, I know that you all are here. We do. You have apprenticeship programs. You have a lot. Um, that you can offer for some of the people who's interested in getting into the trades. Do you have any questions for 
uh, Ford. Um, my name is Adrian Bonds. I'm, I'm with Roofers Local 149. I was wondering when do you plan to start putting these temporary roofs on and I have a list of contractors ready to go for you. My name is Ron Staley and uh, I represent the Crispin Brinker Joint Venture. So the temporary roofs that we're looking at right now hopefully will be going on in November and I can get you the bidders list of the people we have looking at it. I can tell you they are all, all, all union members here in the city of Detroit. Um, so it, it, right now it's primarily just rolled rubber and some tarps uh, because there's really nothing on here. Ultimately we're going to be having um, some um, sheet metal roofs probably back on the waiting room again, copper and uh, then uh, whether it's single ply or built up roof on the tower and on the back office areas. That work and most of the work for this project is in design right now. The design uh, firm has just started in the last week or so surveying the building and getting to understand it even better than what we, we did in the conceptual process. And um, so it's probably gonna be the middle of next year to see a lot of the work coming out on the streets but we will have multiple packages. If, you, if you're aware of the train station, how it's configured, there's really three separate buildings there that are all connected together. And so we're gonna take that opportunity when we can to have individual bid packages. So the roofer that does the tower may be different than the roofer that does the waiting room may be different than the roofer in the back of the building on the, on the concourse area. So those type of things we will be looking at breaking up as the design comes available and to make sure we maximize the opportunities for contractors of all sizes. Is that that help? Any other questions up here? Thank you, yeah. Madam President. Ron, I have a question. Will you be splitting the uh, plumbing and the mechanical? So we haven't decided on all the packages yet, how they're going to be split. The plumbing makes it is possible to do that because we can do it by building. The mechanical, we don't know the ultimate system going in the building yet to make that determination. We have a little more concern on doing that because I want to make sure that the pumps in the head end section feed everything and I don't want finger pointing. So once we know that system, we'll be able to determine how that, that work is separated for the mechanical. That's the one that's most problematic on this building. And my next question is going to be to my friend Rich. Will Ford Land be looking at water conservation for this de development? So yeah, we're, we're going through a whole sustainability um, process right now um, and what is the best way um, in the brass factory, for example. Um, we have set aside um, a process to um, retain water and how to make sure that we can um, reintroduce it back in um, to the Fantastic. system. So it, we're in the development of it, but it absolutely, I, I think it's one of the core things that we do is sustainability. Okay. Um, and so it definitely um, is one of the things that we'll be looking for. Okay. Right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, not a question, just a comment. Again, my name is Dennis Segiri with the Onion Workers. Uh, you know, we're just the Onion Workers. I'm sure all the building trades were. Really excited to be a part of this project and partner with you guys, and we're looking forward to getting this building up and running to your standards and what you guys expect. Thank you. We really look forward to, to this, so I really appreciate that. Absolutely. Obviously, uh, being a part of the operating engineers with the iron workers, I think we'll be there, happy to be there with you too. But um, I, I would just want to throw out there, if you need steam for that new building, you might want to talk to the folks over on this side of the room. I think the loop <laughs> makes it all the way. Well, thank you very much. Um, a number of us today were with 500 students of the city of Detroit, many of them from the Randolph Career Training Education Center. I'm here representing the youth of Detroit who want to get into the union. And the question that I have to this uh, STEAM board, and especially Rich Bardelli, and we go back many, many years, sustainability was the key when we did the Ford Visitor Center back a decade ago. It's been a long time. I say, how can we maybe think out of the box and bring a youth corps from the 
city high schools that are getting into the building trades to work with the city, Mr. Edge, and the Ford Motor Car Company and put a stamp on the regrowth of the city of Detroit by employing our young people who can get into the building trades and have a career for their life. That's the question, that's the challenge, and you know where you can, I can get a hold of me. And Adrian, I see that smile. I introduced her to one of our students who came in second in the skilled trades task of training in Grand Rapids in plumbing, and I introduced a young man that I hope Adrian can put to work. Thank you. Thank you, and so I'm not gonna put them on the spot to answer that, and we will work with you as well as them to try to make that happen. Good evening, everybody. Hello, I had a question uh, for everybody up here. Oftentimes I see skills trades and think about um, engineering, welding, things like that. I'm a painter and I would like to know uh, where do the painters fit in in all of this? So we have had the painters local um, at our skilled trades uh, meeting. I don't know if anyone is here today but we have had them at our skilled trades meeting before. I never know who's gonna come to the meeting. They come to the meetings as they are available. The, the unions, the different locals come as they are available. We have that discussion on our agenda as well. But they have come to the meetings. We do have um, painters that get involved in this skilled trades meeting, so we don't isolate them. We invite all of the trades and everyone to our meetings to participate. Did I answer your question? Because you're still Madam, looking a little puzzled. I can, uh, Madam President, I can. So uh, if you don't mind, after the meeting, I can definitely uh, coordinate uh, a, with uh, the painters. They also have in the, in the back, there's a brochure that has mustcareers.org. It has all of the skilled trades. So there's a, there's a section in there for the painters apprenticeship program as well. It's back uh, in those yellow pamphlets. Prince Rose has them. Uh, you'll see that their information is in there. But you know, after the meeting, I can definitely uh, link you up with uh, the people over there. Let me say we have this meeting once a month. Um, we go around the city, we move throughout the city, we try to have the meeting someplace that has free parking so you don't have to worry about getting a ticket. Um, we try to have the meeting someplace where you can catch the bus if you need to catch the bus, but we go throughout the city with this meeting, hosting this meeting month to month. We will not have a November meeting, but we will start back up in January. We'd not have a November and December meeting. Um, council is on recess, um, so we don't hold, hold the meetings those months, but we will start back in January. It is important that you sign in. Um, if you sign in, Linda Wesley is our, raise your hand, Linda, email queen. She loves to email you. She will email you till you fall out, reading emails. She will make sure you get an email. You will know where our next meeting are, um, will be held. We want people to get information. I want people to be employed. I want people to get into the skilled trades. I want you to have these careers. That means less poverty for the city of Detroit and for the state of Michigan when you are able to get into the trade. So I do everything I can humanly possibly do to make sure you get into those apprenticeship programs to hold the developers accountable, to make sure our businesses in the city so that they won't go out of business, get business with these people. I'm working on an ordinance now um, to ensure that businesses won't be left behind. So I do everything humanly possible within my realm of thinking to ensure that everyone is covered. I have my Civil Rights Inclusion Department that wants to speak, I believe, so. Uh, good afternoon again. My, my name is, good afternoon. My name is Rodney Nolan. Um, just to piggyback on a couple things. 
our department actually monitors what is going on on these job sites. Uh, Dennis Mitchell from Barton Mallow, she can attest to that. We were constantly on site talking to the, the tradesmen and also talking to the unions and also talking to the contractors to make sure that they're meeting their 51% requirement. Did they do that? Not all of them. Not all of them. And the reason is the lack of training that Detroiters have. And with that being said, Rich, I'm going to ask you a question. This is a question that's been on my mind for a long time since this project has been announced. What is the actual plan of action that you're going to have in place to ensure that this 51% requirement is met by your contractors? Thank you. Thanks for the question. Because um, it, it is difficult, and you know, I, I think we all recognize it's difficult. Um, but I think the first thing to do is to make sure it's part of our contracts and what we do to go forward, um, to make sure that they uh, know that that is what they need to meet. Um, I, I think part, the other part is as we move forward to look at um, if we if a trade can't get there. Um, I think we have some time, as Ron said earlier, some of the trades packages don't come out until you know, mid next year. Um, so we're, we're actively putting together our hours um, by trade to understand how, um, what we need to do, uh, how many hours we need to meet by each one. Um, and then to say, can we meet it or not meet it? And if we can't, then put together a training program um, and come back to um, the city council and to the, um, uh, the city of Detroit uh, to talk about that. We have made a significant investment, as I said, in our CBO process um, to, for training, um, to get that training started right away. Right. Um, so, so there are things, I think we, we're just starting to get ready to understand you know, where each of the programs are. The train station really is just, um, it's half of the program uh, that we're doing, um, but it's, it's the start, which is important. Um, because if we get it right now and we start to train people now, um, over the next um, two years, we'll make sure that we have people in the pipeline to, to meet those. So um, we'll work hard for that. Um, and, and, you know, I, I could sit and talk to you all day that it is. I'll show you by our actions that we will. Um, so I welcome you to our site. I will be visiting the site. <laughs> Look forward I'll, to it. Thank I'll, you. Also, um, one thing, if you need us as a resource, because we get calls constantly in our office about what jobs are available, what projects are going on in the city of Detroit where I could possibly become employed. And we send out emails to all of the different companies that are out here. We have a Detroit uh, headquartered and Detroit certified Detroit business list in our office that we maintain every year. So if you're looking for more contractors, we have those lists in our office that you can access through our website and we can, we'll be happy Great. to give that information to you that, that that's all i really appreciate that and that that's the only way we're going to get it done absolutely is, is the partnership with us um, i guess i'd ask ron not to put you on the spot Ron, um, but l let's work to get a meeting um, with the city and make sure that we will come and meet with you right away absolutely and start to talk through that I, we're not going to be able to do it by ourselves and um, understanding what those contractors are and um, how to get that done is, is going to be key for us. So, if, and Ron and, Ron and the Brinker team are um, going to be key for us to do that. Absolutely. That'd be I great. appreciate that. No Thank problem. Our, my, my director's name is Charity Dean. Charity is new to our office, and she's very excited about being able to do this and be a part of the task force meetings and help out Absolutely. with getting people employed in the city of Detroit. Great. We're committed to it. So he said it's difficult. Now I'm going to tell you why it's difficult. It's difficult because you all are not applying to get into the trades. I need you to start making sure you are ready for apprenticeship programs. Um, I have heard some concerns from some people saying we're not being called by the unions. And let me just say this, as developers continue to develop in this city, as um, opportunities become available, you will be called, you be, will be reached upon because it is important that this 51% of the trades are met in the city of Detroit. It's important because if they don't meet it, 
they will be fine. Um, and we have to make sure we have people available and people trained and people getting trained to be able to meet. There's a lot of development that's coming into this city. Mr. Winfrey, can you come up and um, introduce yourself? And then I want to, again, have the trades talk about their apprenticeship programs to make sure everyone knows about their apprenticeship program. And then following that, I want to have a quick five minute discussion regarding changing the meeting date from Tuesday to Wednesday and the reason why. I'd like to say uh, good evening, everyone. My name is uh, Tyrone Winfrey. And on behalf of uh, Historic Little Rock Baptist Church, as well as Wayne County Community College, we just want to thank uh, Madam President uh, Brenda Jones, City Council President, the esteemed members of this body, this, count, this uh, panel here, as well as members of the audience. On September 28th, we had a job fair and skill expo that was phenomenal, where we had people come and get it hired. The skilled trades were there, employers were there, and it was just a great event. So we just thank you on behalf of those two entities. Coming up on November 1st and 2nd, is called the Greater Grace Temple College Fair and Career Expo. Again, we want to expose Detroiters, Detroit area individuals to college. We want to expose them to the skilled trades as well as employers. If their mother or father is looking for a job or a skilled trade, we want them to come out. If the student is looking for a skilled trade or looking for a college, we want them to come out. We're asking that you all come out as well. It's from 9 to 1 o'clock on Thursday the 1st and 9 to 1 o'clock on Friday the 2nd of November. And then that Thursday evening from uh, 5.30 to 9 will be the, what we call the family night, where people can come out as parents and as families to find out about all this great information. Yes, Detroit is changing. Yes, a lot is going on. And we want to continue to bring these opportunities to our people. And so, again, we thank our illustrious dynamic council president, Ms. Brenda Jones, thank you. And there are flyers in the back regarding this, all this information. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Madam President. Um, my name is William Rogers. I'm the region manager of the Law and Parole Office. I uh, wanted to real touch base with you guys real quick. Um, one of my staff told me about this meeting that uh, pretty much is conducted every month and about the need for that you guys need people for um, various types of employment. Um, one, I just wanted to let you guys know, I don't know if you ever heard about the vocational village program that we have in uh, Jackson, where we have guys that are um, pretty much trained in a lot of um, various vocations. Additionally, um, every month at the Law and Parole Office, uh, the fourth Tuesday of the month, we have a program they call the Returning Citizen Sessions. During that session, we have various people from the community talk about the opportunities, uh, employment, and various things. Um, I just want to let you guys know if you ever need to come to the office to um, touch base with our uh, population, the returning citizens, um, you're more than welcome to do so. Um, I'm not sure where you are on the agenda because I got here a little late, but um, I'll stay after in case you guys have any questions or would like to get any information from me. Thank you. And I just also want to tell you my colleague, Council Member Janae Ayers, has a returning citizens task force as well. You have a quick question? Yes. Mm -hmm. Good evening. My name is Tamuk Scruggs. I'm here uh, this evening representing a couple of entities. One, Local 80, Sheet Metal, uh, and also the Boy Scouts of America Explorer Program. So in, in hearing about what's happening and in, in the recruiting for the skilled trades, for those of you here, we are actively looking to uh, create clubs for children from the ages of 8 to 20. Because right now, we, we no longer have the opportunity or the time frame to be able to wait until they get into high school and ready for graduation. We have to start exposing them earlier to these opportunities. College isn't for everyone. And for those that would like to go to college as well, the skill trades is always a great program to get into, whether it's sheet metal, electricians, pipe fitters, or plumbers. So if there's any entities here that would like to expose their, their younger children to what the skill trades are about, feel free to contact me my, uh, personally 
uh, at 313-471-8602, or you can contact Mr. John Fort back there in the back. Can you hold your hand up, John, please? Thank you, John Fort. Uh, he's one of the heads of the Explorer program. The headquarters is over here on Warren and 14. Uh, Prudence is a part of that, that board, and so is Laura. Laura, can you hold your hand up? You can contact any one of us so that we can get a pro, our program into your church, school, whatever op option you have available that you would like to expose your, your youngins to. Uh, because, again, from 8 to 20, these programs are no longer in middle schools or high schools, so we want to get them back exposed to even being – at a younger age, even being exposed to them at a younger age from 8 to 20. As far as recruiting for the skilled trades, uh, Brenda spoke about uh, the trades coming up and speaking about our trades. Sheet metal is, uh, we just renegotiated our contract. We have a, three, a new three-year contract. We do everything metal. We form all the metal, including the, the, the coverings, uh, the roofs. Uh, we do the metal for those as well, architectural sheet metal. So our test is coming up in January. So you have a couple of months to get yourself together, to get prepared as far as testing, uh, getting your math skills together, because that's pretty much the hardest part to pass for every one of the skill trades. Uh, Dino Van was up here earlier there with the STEEP program. Dino, raise your hand for me one more time. It's my brother back there. Uh, if you have any issues about getting your math together, being able to math, pass the math part, go check Dino out. His program has put plenty of people to work already through the iron workers or whatsoever. We also have a second test in July. So you have time. If you, uh, Responsibility fees have been waived now. So for those individuals who haven't gotten their license, you have the opportunity now because you will need it for the, for the skilled trades. So you also need your diploma and a valid ID or a driver's license. So we're always looking. All the skilled trades are looking. Thank, Thank you. you. So... Quickly, most of my trades have meetings on Tuesday. And so we have talked about changing this meeting to the fourth Wednesday as opposed to the fourth Tuesday. Um, I would just like to see the hands of those who have meetings that are here today that have meetings or it would be best for them uh, and you as well, because I need to see you in the audience. We can't have a meeting without having people here. Um, so I'd like to see the hands of those who would prefer to keep it the fourth Tuesday as opposed to moving it to the fourth Wednesday. So if you prefer the fourth Tuesday, let me see your hand. If you prefer the fourth Wednesday, let me see your hand. How come I didn't see everybody's hands somewhere? <laughs> now, I know everybody got two hands. What's going on? So, I'm going to try this again. If you prefer the fourth, please, if you're sitting here, because I need to know as we move forward to January, if you prefer the fourth Tuesday, let me see your hand. If you prefer the fourth Wednesday, let me see your hand. Okay, so our next meeting in January will be the fourth Wednesday. Ms. Wesley will email everyone to give them the location of that meeting the fourth Wednesday in January. Quickly, if the trades again will quickly, one minute, give your trade, give your email, and give me um, when, if you have an apprenticeship program coming up, a starting of an apprenticeship program starting up, give me the date and how they get involved. Quickly. Again, uh, Rick Bruce with uh, IBEW, International Brother of Electric Workers, Local 58. You can go to our website. It's DetroitEITC.org. Again, DetroitEITC.org. There is one website that you can go to to see all the different skill trades. That's mustcareers.org. That will link you to all the affiliated skill trades, over 21 different skill trade apprenticeship programs. That is an earn while you learn program. Uh, thank you so much for everybody coming out. It is so great to see all the seats filled and so many smiling faces out there. Please remember to stay optimistic. There is so much work going on here. Ford Motor Company is just one example of one developer coming to the city. There is so much other 
work around the city that's going around in this region. We have about a 10 year window of great expansion of skilled trade uh, opportunities. And uh, if you haven't gotten in yet and you've been trying and you've applying, please be persistent. Do not give up. Do not let just somebody say no to stop you from trying. Please continue to keep on pushing. Uh, is Percy Johnson in here? Percy, if, if there is anybody in here who needs your help, they need your help, Percy, please make sure that they can link up to you and that they do not get discouraged. Hold on, Percy, he ain't cheering, I am. All hold right. that hold uh, okay. thought for a minute, sure. hold that thought. Right. Next person, I'm not gonna give you as right. much time as I gave him, this is his no. hall, so he took advantage of it, next. All right. Uh, my name is Adrian Bonds, president of Roofers 149. We have a four-year apprenticeship. Uh, my phone number is 313-961-6093. Again, Dennis Aguirre with the Onion Workers Local 25. We're accepting applications all year long. Uh, we have three re requirements, high school diploma, GED, driver's license, and you have to be able to pass a drug test. You could go print off our application on our website, www.ironworkerswithans25.org. Hello, my name is Reginald Kearney, Vice President of Labor's Local 1191. And as I stated earlier, we don't have a apprenticeship. We don't, we don't require any math to be a labor. So our website is laborslocal1191.org. You can go on that website, you can fill out a non-member registration form, which doesn't, it doesn't guarantee you any work, but with the right qualifications that you may have, with the little experience you may have, you can put that on that, on that, uh, that uh, registration form, and we will get it, or you can come down to the local, 2161 West Grand Boulevard, and that's Detroit, Michigan, right across from Northwestern High School. Thank you. Hello, Adrienne Bennett with Ben Curry. Um, I was a, an apprentice that came through the apprenticeship program. Plumbers Local 98, they do have an apprenticeship program, five years. You have to be drug free, high school diploma, driver's license, and you need to be able to pass the keys. Um, Melody can give you the address and the phone number for the, uh, to get the applications. Thank you. Once again, Jeff McCarthy with the Operating Engineers. Uh, boiler operators and building engineer apprenticeships applications will be February, March. Uh, heavy equipment operators and heavy equipment mechanics, that will be in June. I would urge anyone who's interested in the building maintenance boiler operator program. There's some in the back and also you can, it's one block away, our training center. You can use it without being a member. It is about the cheapest uh, college education you can ever invest in. Uh, I strongly recommend it. Uh, check it out at oe324.org for more information. I would also tell you if you're looking for a job right now, Stacy from Detroit Renewable Power can probably give you some information about some vacancies they're looking to fill. And thanks everybody, good luck. Don't quit. We were all you some number of years ago sitting there looking for that job. Don't quit, please, I urge you. It's the greatest. Thanks. Once again, Prudence Rose, Must Careers. Uh, this is all about careers in apprenticeships for all of the unions that are up here and some that aren't here. There's all of these in the white. If you get this booklet, everything in the white is an apprenticeship opportunity available to you. There are a lot of different things you have to know about getting an apprenticeship. I'm not gonna go into them right now because we do not have the time, but I will be here. If you're interested in an apprenticeship, you come and see me and I will tell you how you can go about getting uh, into the application process. And I will tell you right now, this gentleman is absolutely correct. Do not give up. I never give up. Okay. So I don't want you to give up. Thank you. Mo, is it working? There you go. Uh, I'm, my name is Mo Hamid, and I'm with uh, the Michigan Regional Council of Carpenters and Millwrights. I work with the Millwrights Local 1102. I am an organizer and recruiter for them. Uh, we take applications for the carpenters and for the millwrights every Wednesday between 9 and noon at our apprenticeship schools. If you call 7, 586 756 3610, 
We will give you all the information on where you got to go for either trade. Thank you very much, and I agree with everybody. Please do not give up. We need all the skilled trades to grow as much as possible. Thank you. Thank you again, Madam President, for this opportunity. As Jeff mentioned, Detroit Renewable Energy, we do have positions available at Detroit Renewable Power and Detroit Thermal. If you are interested, the easiest way is to probably just send your resume and an inquiry to info at DetroitRenewable.com. We are not hiring for IT right now, but we do have positions available in the plants. Info at DetroitRenewable.com. And um, this young man right here had a question, and I'll let the um, unions um, answer that, but opportunities for returning citizens. Yeah. So there is a returning citizens task force that is um, council member Ayers chairs that task force. There are opportunities that are available for returning citizens. Most of the unions do not discriminate against returning citizens. The only thing I say to everyone and I'm going to take my glasses off when I say it. You do have to be drug free. I don't need you to tell me whether or not you're drug free or not. But what I need you to do is if you're not, go get yourself drug free. Do whatever you need to do to make sure that when you go to get tested and go for that apprenticeship program, you are drug free. That's your, your business. I don't need to know. We don't need to know right now. But what we do need you to do is make sure when you go to apply for that apprenticeship program, you are drug free. I had someone ask me the question, what about medical marijuana? I don't care what kind of marijuana it is. You have to be drug free. They don't discriminate against recreational or medical. You have to be drug free. Make sure you are drug free. Again, they do not discriminate against returning citizens. We want returning citizens to get employed. There are credits that are given to employers for felonies, people who are returning citizens. So they do not discriminate. And I know you have a question, but my staff been giving me crooked eyes because I normally start my meeting on time and end my meeting on time. And I have one more person who I have to let speak, and then we are going to adjourn the meeting. But you will be able to talk to anybody because they will talk to you. They, they don't normally run out the meeting. They will talk to you um, before they leave here. Mr. Percy. Okay, okay right quick. So you, I know you got a lot of numbers that you heard. If you happen to miss a number that you didn't get, please call me and I'll make sure that you get in contact with the individuals that are up here on the stage and help guide you into the getting into this apprenticeship programs. Use me as your help and simply call or text to 313-719-9921. Text the word help. Once again, 313-719-9921. Test the word help, and I promise you I'll call you and ask any question that you might have missed or you didn't understand or how to get in contact with these individuals up here on this, at this panel. I'll give you the contact number. And all I ask for that you do in return is that you vote. We got an election coming up November the 6th. A lot of the stuff that we are able to do here comes from you putting people in office that's going to help us to be able to have the programs and the training that you will be able to take care of and be able to lift yourself up. And also, if you need a ride to the polls, 313-613-8539, 313-613-8539. If you have a family member that's at home and not able to get a ride to the polls, we will come pick them up and get them there. Use that number to get you a ride to the polls. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Percy. One more. Hold on. Again, our next meeting will be January the 23rd, location to be determined. Uh, Ms. Wesley will email you that information. This is not the last meeting that Ford will be at. If you did not see or hear from who you wanted to hear or see at this meeting, 
Nobody is paid to come to this meeting. Everybody comes on their own free will, and we never know what unions are going to be here. I want to, um, before I listen to here, my last speaker, who this is her home, IBEW, I want to thank you all for being here. Thank Ford Motor Company. I'm sorry, I keep saying Ford Motor Company, but thank Ford for being here. Um, um, thank them for the development that is going to be in this area and all of the people that they will be giving careers to. I want to thank IBEW for allowing us to grace their space. I want to thank my media people who have been working all day that are here to make sure that it is televised. I want to thank um, Ms. Clayton from the Renewable Energy, and I want to thank you all because, again, without you, we would not have a meeting. Thank my staff who has gracefully been here. IBEW is our last speaker. Hello. Thank you. Um, I know there was a gentleman in the audience, I don't know if he's still here, that wanted more information on how to or what other resources he could get for the math. Okay, so I put some information on the back table there, and that's for everybody else that's going to need the help with the math and the extra resources. It's on a two-page paper called How to Apply. So, thank you. I want to say in advance, happy holidays to everyone. Um, we have a couple of holidays coming up before I see you, three holidays. So happy holidays to you all. Be safe. Do not give up. Um, remember, if you don't get that opportunity, the first meeting. You may not get it to second meeting, but don't quit coming because there are many opportunities that are available and you will get that opportunity. And we will have some people at our upcoming meetings to talk about opportunities that they didn't think they were going to get and they got and they have been into the trades and into apprenticeship programs. Again, thank you for being here. Um, thank all of you all for being up here with me. Thank you for wishing me a happy birthday. And I look forward to seeing all of you in January again. Be safe. If you need me or my office, um, my, our number is 224-1245. But Ms. Wesley will be emailing you as long as you leave us your information. I appreciate you all. We look forward to all of you getting into the trades. Thank you. This meeting stands adjourned. Miss Muhammad.